Um, thank you, Finn. Uh, Susie had a question here uh, about almost 15 minutes ago, and I'd like to kind of roll some of those back here as, as, as quick as we can before you got to go. Uh, uh, Susie, you still uh, got your ears on there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. Oh. Uh, hi, Cliff. I'd like to ask you a question uh, in regards to NASA or and our government. If they actually have the capability of creating a uh, the second coming of Jesus Christ with holograms. Uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, it, there's actually two parts of that. You know, a hidden part of it is that uh, you'd have to have, uh, let me put it this way, they could not so create that illusion for me because I'm not a Christ follower for one. That instantly means that none of the neural pathways in my brain would be triggered by their propaganda. And I'd sit back and say, hmm, I'm going to check this out. Whereas the people that had been prepped for that would so assume. So in that sense, they could probably get away with the illusion, yes. Especially if there was enough prep done uh, in advance. I mean, people will believe all kinds of horseshit. It's just a matter of getting them to understand it in some other capacity than horseshit. Make sense? Yes, I guess I was just asking if they uh, basically had the capability, the technology, to do that on a global type basis with the uh, hologram. Understand. There's a fractal technology and then there's holographic technology. And the two either could be used or both could be used together. So yes, you could create a big hologram, um, as some people have suggested was the tetrahedron over Mars, uh, over Moscow. They, they suggest that it was indeed a, a, an illusion created by a complex uh, holographic technique. Uh, you, you could do that, but an easier way for them to do that is, would, would be direct mind control, which would be done at a, a scalar fractal level, where the images would, they wouldn't have to create a big uh, Jesus coming out of the sky image and have it float around the planet, as a lot of people would imagine. I would think that the easier way to, to do it would be to fire up all the scalar technology and just simply trigger uh, neural pathways within people's mind that they know create specific images if you are so pre-programmed to accept those images. Again, make sense? Yes, thank you for answering that. Well, if you kind of uh, mentioned before, uh, you know, about our new uh, nuclear policy, but uh, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, do the web bots see a uh, nuclear bomb or an atomic device being uh, used in um, any way at all by either superpower, nation state, or uh, some sort of rogue group, terrorist organization, or anyone, say, within the next year? Do you see an atomic bomb going off on Earth? Uh, let me answer that by first prefacing it and saying it's like religion. It's one of those subjects where there's just a whole lot of uh, hot discussion about it and very little delta and, and very little emotional difference from week to week. So it's do and we live in that delta. We live in the in the emotional uh, shifts that occur and thus the change in words. So if there's very little change in the language, there's no not a whole lot for us to read. However, that being said. We don't have anything other than the Israeli mistake that relates to uh, nuclear, other than the potential for a nuclear accident related to a volcano somewhere. But it appears that the volcano it triggers a, um, uh, a shakedown, if you will, of a nuke plant uh, in some capacity where the rods are damaged and spilled, and it's um, uh, nasty but not catastrophic and is dealt with by local authorities. Now, the Israeli mistake is another issue. That appears to be something really bizarre, like uh, a nuclear tip bunker buster that goes too deep and hits an oil field and sets off this radioactive volcano thing that we all have to deal with. Now, bear in mind, if we approach November 8th and we see a ramp up in early November of the uh, Israelis versus Iranians, then my money would be that on the 8th that they fire off their attack on Iran. For the next four days, the world is held in... A uh, grip of fear is we kind of wonder what's going on, and then we go into the uh, magnitude of the mistake as the nuke, uh, oil, fire, whatever it is, produces a global fallout that we all have to live with for the next two months as we wonder whether or not the fallout's going to come on us. 
That would all fit the timing, although we don't have any data to suggest that that's the occurrence. And we do know at this point that there's no release prior to July 8th that would suggest the Israelis do anything to anybody really significant relative to Iran. Uh, Cliff, I've got a question. Go ahead. Uh, by the way, I really love your work, man. I think you rock. Uh, I've just got a question about um, the, the powers that be. I mean, who are they? Uh, in your reads, I mean, who are they? Um, is it just, does it just stop at the 13 families, if it is the 13 families? Is there something above that? Who, who are these people? I found how we defined the entity, and that'll give you an idea, and you can actually validate a lot of my research. We've got this uh, analysis uh, set of, of spiders, little software uh, written in C um, uh, code that reads websites, and it extracts words and plugs them into the lexicon and gives us, um, uh, if you will, an emotional picture of that particular website. And so I went and hit the um, Council for Foreign Relations. Uh, here in the U.S., uh, they've got a website that's just filled with uh, all kinds of treasure things to read if you're a linguist because they betray so much of their organization and even their casual chatter back and forth. And they have all of these uh, uh, think pieces, and you should really pay attention to the think pieces that the Council for, on Foreign Relations puts out because this is their plan, as, and they're discussing it and critiquing it among themselves. Anyway, so that led me to a, a series of tracings and we went from the connections from the Council on Foreign Relations over to the uh, all the way back through actually into the British uh, royal family and connections into the Fabian Society which led us into connections back to Yale which led us to the 322 groups which include the skull and bones but are not limited to skull and bones all of which trace their roots back to the um, uh, Society of Death in Germany and it basically it comes back to this in, in short order, you can think of the powers that be at a very critical level as being those people that attend Bilderberger meetings. There is a higher group, a higher selection uh, within that group, and those would be the people that organize the Bilderberger meetings. And we note that those go all the way back to a bunch of prominent Nazi fellows. So to a certain extent we can say that the Germany may have lost the war but the Nazis did not in fact to a real true extent a great number of the people are connected of course to the royal families so you can go back the other way and you can start looking at genealogy so when um, what's his name uh, Kerry the uh, Democrat stooge was against uh, uh, Bush the pretender and they were both cousins to the Queen and all of this kind of stuff that really points out who's running what and who is the the powers that be I actually stop at the people that attend Bilderberger, figuring that anybody that's outside of that power loop, whatever their personal family connections or bloodline, is not effectively yielding power, and we can kind of just set them to a side a bit. Uh, there certainly is a core group within Bilderberger. I think it, its number fundamentally eventually comes down to three. That's the best I can do at the moment. AZ had a question in chat uh, for you. Uh, something about a space ribbon. Um, is there anything in the web box about a space ribbon? Uh, we didn't get the ribbon word. We did have banding. We do do have uh, the. There's this whole in the space code farts entity, which is our official, uh, if you will, official. It, it's our it's our place where we keep all of the stuff that's officially denied and uh, officially unknown, as well as practically unknown, because there's a whole lot of stuff that humans don't know. And the, and the emotional out, uh, out, outcome of the bot runs actually suggest pointers to areas where we just don't have words yet. So within the Space Coast Farts entity, we had an area where we had um, unknown energies from space. And this was different from sun disease, but it arose about the same time. Maybe it was about four or five months behind the sun disease uh, stuff coming up. So it would have been in a run behind the, the very first one. But it's been around for a number of years. And the reading of it is you could indeed... Uh, suggest well I think maybe 35% uh, or so of the linguistics would point to an extrasolar system energetic ribbon as being a very good linguistic description that fits with what we've got and it and that would tend to suggest that that would be the source for these unknown energies from space 
It, it makes sense. Makes sense. Thanks, Cliff. So, do the robots lean towards a specific uh, prophecy as far as uh, uh, Hopi Indian, Mayan, be it, uh, biblical, Muslim? Is there any specific religion prophecy that uh, the robots seem to align more with than another? Uh, boy, that's a real tough one. Uh, I'm anti-religious. I think all religions are control structures. So I have a tendency to put that bias in and not really examine the religious uh, elements uh, very much. In terms of aligning with prophecy, I know about the various different linguistic elements of the prophecies because we analyze those repeatedly because they form emotional, cultural, common ties. So in other words, the prophetic uh, visions of the Hopi as an example would have language in them that would represent the entire Mesoamerican structure of prophecy and we can reconcile that with with other linguistic structures and extract emotional cultural uh, profiles if you will which we use in our work in doing the analysis so we we go that far however um, the data within the bot runs themselves doesn't really tend to align with a with a prophetic vision it more comes down to we're really friggin' doomed. A lot of it seems to be unknown energies from space and a sun disease. And it's up to anybody's guess as to whether uh, the Hopi have it more right than um, some Sufi in uh, the desert in Yemen. Uh, we don't have anything that clearly points to one religious group over the other being correct. Now, we do have all kinds of stuff that has a tendency to, to um, not denigrate, but to, to re reveal religions in a new light relative to the linguistic patterns within them, especially being able to slice and dice the religions into the faith-based versus the um, uh, working kind of religions like uh, Buddhism or that kind of thing, where you're supposed to work towards the, the path as opposed to simply believing. And uh, there's a whole lot to suggest that the faith-based religions, primarily at this point, uh, Christianity, Judaism, and, and Islam are uh, heavily, heavily manipulated and anybody with a sound mind should stay away from anything relating to organized religion within those groups just because w there are so many linguistic traces back to evil people that that are shouting things out in like the Council on Foreign Relations and in the Bilderbergers uh, I mean they're they're even announcing that they're paying off the imams and paying off uh, preachers to be part of their control structure it's in a lot of their text Uh, there was a couple questions. This is Rush again. Uh, that came up about uh, these uh, orbs or um, uh, ice that are uh, flowing through and around the sun. Is the, the web ops uh, picked up anything on that? So we have language within uh, Space Goat Farts that uh, deals with all of these under the official category of unknown. Uh, this also relates to that uh, strange object that's entering the solar system in a 